Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a video on how to restore a boat on a budget. Let's dive in right now. Today we're gonna to be working on a 260 Sea Ray bow rider. Now you can clearly see how oxidized it is, all the white, all the chalkiness and the blue. It's almost turning the boat white, but we did a test section. We only did a buff and a polish, and this is what it looks like. However, we're not where we wanna be yet, so we have a $1,000 budget. This is gonna be a great video to learn how to detail a boat on a budget. We have $1,000, two days to work on this boat. We're actually gonna take a little bit of the budget and do some sanding, which wasn't in the original quote, but it's gonna take like 10, 20 minutes. Not gonna cost a lot of money. We're gonna really cut down on this gel coat because you can see how open it is. You can see how ripply it is. We wanna flatten that out, close off the pores. It's really accepting of the elements right now and it's gonna oxidize faster. So we're gonna cut that down with sanding. Guys, stick around for the video. You're gonna learn a lot about sanding, buffing, polishing, polymer. All this is gonna be fully explained in this video. If you're a boat owner, boat detailer, super practical easy to implement, let's get to it. Step number one is gonna be wet sanding. So what do we need for this? Well, first of all, we need to have hose access, water access, so whether you have a hose or you have a spray bottle with some dish soap, whatever you wanna do, I don't find it to be necessary to use dish soap. I find water to be sufficient. Now, you don't really want to dry sand with Abrilon because it'll catch all the oxidation and it's gonna become an effective. So Abrilon is better with wet sanding. So you have Merca Abrilon, you have Merca Abernet. Abernet is a super aggressive pad-like. It's not a foam, it's more of a sanding disc, and the Abrilon is more of a sanding pad. So you can dry sand with Merca Abernet, just not Merca Abrilon. So just a few background information tips before we even get started. So. As long as you have your water access, I like to spray on and spray off. So I spray on the section before I do it. I do about a three by three foot section. You're gonna get about two to three sections with your pad before you have to exchange a new one. So on a 26 foot boat like this, you're gonna run about four or five sanding pads per side per the hull. So that's about 10 total for the whole boat for the hull. So just something to keep in mind. Um, you can always check your pad with your hand and see how much grit is still left, but typically they only last two or three sections of the boat before they become pretty dull and ineffective. So once you have your hose access, what machine are we using? We have a Gruyette's Garage G9, which is a dual action polisher. However, unfortunately, this machine is no longer being made, so you can no longer purchase it. Um, they do have a new updated version, but in my opinion, it's a little bit high for the price and for what we're looking for out of a sanding machine. So your best bet is gonna be the Max Shine Dual Action Polisher. This is a budget friendly, I think around 100 if not cheaper option. And you can purchase this at marinedetailsupply.com. Um, it's a great option for sanding because you don't wanna have anything super expensive. Once we get into like two, three, four hundred dollars we don't really wanna be sanding with a $400 machine because what if we drop it in the water? It's gonna be getting wet, it's gonna be splashing up in your face. You can see I just got hit pretty good right here, but you're gonna have a lot of water on your machine, so it could break at any time, so there's no reason to spend 400 bucks and waste your money on that. Keep your high-end postures for your detailing, use your cheaper stuff for sanding. So once we have that, all we're using here is Merca Abrilon. So Merca Abrilon 1000, this is about your standard, so whenever in doubt of what you need to use on your boat or if you're not sure how aggressive to go or how light to go, you're never gonna hurt your boat with a thousand. A thousand is a great place to start. My go-to pads are 500 and a thousand. So if you're unsure, stick with a thousand. If you think your boat's pretty oxidized, you can go with 500. It's really hard to hurt your boat with these options and then you just finish down to 2,000. So it'll be 500, 1,000, 2,000. This boat, it's detail on a budget. All we're doing is 1,000. This also is effective. Um, it's gonna work because our compound is gonna take out the scratches and we're not getting super aggressive with only one round. With one round, you're not actually putting too many deep scratches into the boat. So you're gonna be fine here. It's once you get into the super aggressive stuff like 
once you're going like 600, 800, 1,000, like that's when you start to put a lot of scratch into the boat because you have multiple rounds of aggressive sanding pads. So I hope that makes sense. But go ahead, just kind of watch me go through this process, kind of pick up some tips on your own just by watching me and I'll be back here in a minute with some more tips. to buffing i do have a few more things i want to mention that came to mind number one if you want a more in-depth video of wet sanding be sure to check out my other video which is how to wet sand your boat i'm going to throw that up on the screen that is very in-depth it explains what to look for in sanding and then exactly how to do it um, and it's a lot more in-depth in this video this video is just kind of an overview of sanding so be sure to check that out if you're a boat owner who has an oxidized boat or if you're a boat detailer going to be working on an oxidized boat that video was very helpful. Now, let's continue. So you wanna avoid going in circles. Always go horizontal, vertical in your motions. And that's really anything with detailing. This helps avoid swirls in your boat. So whether you're buffing, polishing, sanding, go side to side, go horizontal, go vertical. And these are the best ways to go about it. Um, another thing is I always like to clean off my section. So some people might wonder if they should spray off after they're done sanding. I like to keep my gel coat clean and easy to work with because when it comes to buffing, when I go to the next step, then I don't have to buff off all the sanding residue along with the oxidation and the scratches. So it really just makes it easier. I think I've covered everything I wanted to in this section of the video. You can purchase your Abalon 1000 or any grid that you're looking for along with the Max Shine DA Posture on MarineDetailSupply.com. Unfortunately, I don't have a discount code for you guys on that. But with that said, we're going to move on to compounding. Again, if you want a more in-depth video of wet sanding, be sure to check out that other video on my YouTube channel. So let's get to compounding. Probably one of the rare times and one of the only few times that I will use something other than Stark Level R. So today I am using Ardex Super 600. So this is a little more aggressive than Stark Level R and it's not a diminishing abrasive. So we're going to have a lot of work time. This is basically liquid sandpaper and we're really going to have to work this in and really, really run it low and then increase the speed and try to finish it out the best we can. So like I said, it's not common that I do this. My preference and I will always be for sanding and finishing out with level R because in my opinion, this is just the easiest, fastest way to do it with the best finishing results. So I'm always sand buff, but for this video, for this budget video, we have to make things work and we have to get the best finish we can in the least amount of time. So we don't have time to do two steps of buffing. So we're gonna go ahead and do our Ardex Super 600 and you guys are gonna see how it turns out. It's gonna leave a little more of a dull finish compared to Level R, but when we come back with the polish, you're gonna see how nicely this shines up. How do we do the application? So I'm always for an applicator. I know some people like to put it straight on the pad. Two reasons I don't prefer this. Number one is the pad gets clogged up faster and it's okay if you have something to remove that, whether that's a ruler or an actual buffing tool. I forget what they call them, but you can purchase that also, you know, on Amazon, Marine Detail Supply. Um, it kind of helps get the compound out of the wool pad. But anyways, I'm drawing a blank there, but I like to use an applicator for that reason. And I like to really rub in the compound and push it into the pores so that I can really take it out with the buffer. So I don't like just having a light contact with it. I like to actually move it around on the gel coat and I just think it leaves a better finish. So I love the applicator. It gives you the opportunity to control how much compound you're putting on the boat and where you want it. So that's just my advice on there. I know a lot of people do not do that, but again, that's just something I've learned over the years that I really appreciate and 
can't go back on. So with the buffer, we have a DeWalt buffer, pretty standard, DeWalt, Makita, both are great options. Everybody has a preference. I prefer the DeWalt, something I've been using for a long time. It's hard for me to change up. Really like the trigger on it, really like the power, the durability, and I've heard great things about Makita in the same terms of categories for durability and things like that. So just a preference thing. We're gonna run this at about 800 to 1000 to really work it in. And then we're gonna finish around 2000 as we work up. So I just simply start low and then I just work up. So I might start at 800, work up to 1500, finish out at 2000. Like there's no exact way to do it. You just start slow and as you work it in, just ramp up that speed and try to get a little more of a glossy finish by the time you're finished and you want to break down the sand grits. You cannot have the sand grits still in the boat when you're finished. So you're going to have to really make sure you work this stuff in. This is not like level R. You're going to have to sit here for three to five minutes and just buff, 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 buff in and really take out all those scratches, really take out all the oxidation in the boat. So a little bit different of approach than you're used to me sharing, but when you have to make this work on a budget and you only have one step, and you weren't able to do all the sanding you would have liked to do, this is your best option here. So there it is guys. Um, go ahead and watch me for a little longer and I'm gonna jump back on here in a second with some more tips. see I'm going at it here this is not an easy thing to do especially on these lifts now Cape Coral has it's known for lifts it's known for wraparound docks canopies all this great stuff but it's still not as easy as detailing out of the water so I'm using my knee and I'm pushing my knee into my arm which is pushing the buffer into the gel coat so I want to try to make it easier on myself and not use all my muscles in my back or I'm gonna wear out really quickly so once we're finished we want to wipe it with a towel um, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. I don't get into the plush microfibers until I get to my polishes. So any microfiber will work just fine for your compounding, any ordinary um, or any little bit beat up kind of microfiber is perfectly fine to use on your compound because you gotta remember our surface still isn't perfect, but it's slowly getting there. So in the compounding steps, we're taking out the scratches, the oxidation, and then you know we're coming back with our polish and you guys know, Elevate is my favorite polish. So I tell you what, Stark Elevate, Stark Level R are my two favorite products, two of my favorite products in the entire industry. Um, here is a little bit of a video of me showing you the before and the after. You can see how much of a difference makes, but it's still not at that gloss point that we need it to, especially when you take a look at the gloss meter, which I will show you coming up in the video. But like I said, Stark Level R, Stark Elevate are my preference when I can sand. Those are my two favorite products, absolutely love them. And some people might say, oh, you're getting paid to say that. And guys, look, I'm an affiliate. I'm not a sponsor of Stark. I'm not being paid monthly to promote their products and all this stuff. So when I have a good product, and you guys know my philosophy is, you know, I serve the 1%, I focus on high-end detailing. When I find a good product, I am more than happy to share that with you guys. I have a lot of companies reach out wanting me to use their products. And a lot of the time, I just don't even reply because I don't believe in their products. If I don't believe in their products, I'm not gonna share it with you guys. I'll do all my testing in the background on my own, but if I don't like the products, they're not gonna be coming on my videos and I will definitely not be sharing them with you. And I definitely don't care about the money in terms of that aspect. Now enough of that, it's time to polish. So you can see I normally use the Flex. You guys know I normally use the Flex with the gray pad, my favorite pad at Marine Detail Supply for the foam pads for polishing out a restoration job. However, with just a thousand, we didn't put many scratches into the boat, so the compound took care of that. All we're doing here with the polish is really trying to get our final gloss, and we have to do this with a wool pad, so there's no other option for this. So we're gonna run Elevate with our yellow medium wool. So this is not a compounding wool, this is more of a finishing wool. And let me tell you, this really put the shine that we were looking for into the boat. Now, it's not gonna leave the ultimate perfect swirl-free finish. It's pretty close, and if you're pretty good at what you're doing and finishing out the pad flat, you're gonna get it to where you want, but it's not gonna finish necessarily like a foam pad. But 
when we come through with the polymer which is on a foam pad and a DA polisher that will take care of the final little flaws that we have in the gel code. So this is all put together, you know, strategically and this is all a process that is made to work um, to get this boat to look the best that we can in the least amount of times with our $1,000 budget. So Elevate likes to run hot. So we have to run this pad. I usually start off around 14. I finish this thing around like 2200. So 22, you know, even if you wanted to, you go a little higher. You just gotta be careful where you're working at on the boat because for example, if you're on the cockpit and you're around a lot of bright work, if that thing pops up, that buffer is gonna nail you in the face or somewhere and it's gonna hurt really bad. So just be safe, be aware of what you're doing. And like I said, Elevate is what we're doing with our medium wool pad. And this is actually a, I wanna say it's a Lake Country. Once I know that for sure, I'll throw that up on the screen for you guys. That All this stuff today can be purchased pretty much at Marine Detail Supply. I'm not trying to like sit here and be a robot about it, but a lot of the stuff that I use is from marinedetailsupply.com. So that's where you can get most of this stuff. So gonna do a final wipe and you can see I now have the plush towel because we don't wanna create any extra scratches. This is the polish, this is our final step before the polymer. So no extra scratches can be in the boat and we gotta get this mirror like finish. So let's continue down. This is pretty much the exact same process as buffing. You're gonna do your three to four swipes of vertical, horizontal, do your wipe off process, and you're gonna be good to go. So because we're not using the flex, because we're not using the foam, there's not really a whole lot extra to explain. It's pretty much the same process as I just did, just with a different pad and a different polish. take a close look of where I left off you can really see the shine that's coming into the boat with Elevate. Um, our deck Super 600 is a very dull finish it's a super aggressive like I said 600 grit it's very aggressive of a compound and Elevate is a 1200 grit polish so you know it's dull and you gotta definitely do a polish after that there's no other way around that so Another thing I wanted to mention, I like to put on Elevate super thin, like almost like I'm putting on wax on a boat. So I always keep my polishes thin. The compounds, I definitely put more on to really get that work time, but the polishes, keep it really thin. You're, you're not gonna use a lot of Elevate. I, it takes me forever to run through a whole gallon of Elevate. I can get a ton of boats, like probably 20 boats done before, maybe not that many, 10, maybe 10. 10 boats done before I gotta buy a new gallon. You can really get a lot done with your polish. There's not a lot that you have to put on the boat, so don't overuse it. Just put it on like wax and polish it off. Really work it in until it's all gone and you have that shine that you're looking for. And then pretty much you should have nothing to wipe off, but you definitely do wanna still wipe off to make sure you don't have any leftover residue. bit of a gloss meter reading and we're gonna get a 88 so that's really good um 85 to 90 is pretty much good enough for a wax or a polymer and then you usually want to get about up to a 90 for a ceramic coating so not quite there for a ceramic but we're in pretty good shape if you get above an 80 you're doing pretty good for a budget detail like this so just keep that in mind if you do have a gloss meter reading um, if not, I will throw the one that I have up on the screen for you to purchase if you want that option. If you're a boat owner, maybe it doesn't make sense. Um, if you're a boat detailer, it definitely helps you. And even if it doesn't help you, it'll help if you have a crew or a team to set a standard in your business. So a little bit of an idea on the gloss reader. <music> left that I want to say about polishing. It's very similar to the compounding process since we're using a buffer and a pad. 
Um, the only thing with the polish really I can say is definitely with anything, make sure you work around your bright work. So I taped off all the bright work to avoid bringing our bright work contaminants onto the gel coat and into it and creating a lot of problems. So always tape off your bright work, especially if it's not clean. Work the pad around that in circles. You know, really make sure you get the edge of that pad up against the bright work um, to make sure that you're not leaving any oxidation around the tight spots of the boat. And the only other thing I can say is like you can tilt your pad, you know, to really work in and cut. But when you're actually doing your final pass finish, you want to keep your pad completely flat against the gel coat. And this is going to leave the swirl free finish. So that's how you get a swirl free finish is keeping that pad completely flat um, and evening the pressure across the entire pad. Because when you tilt it, you're concentrating the pressure on a certain area of the boat. That's what creates the swirls. But when you make that even pressure, that's what leaves that nice, good finish. So. That's the last tip I have for you on the polish. I already told you what I'm running it at. I'm running it hot, 14 up to 22. If not, even up to 25 is okay, which I believe is that's what's on the product. So you can run it up pretty high. So definitely run it fast and hot, and you're gonna get an incredible finish. Wipe off with your microfiber plush. And guys, we're gonna go to the next step. We're gonna get into waxing. the other side for waxing purposes the sun was getting pretty hot on the other side so it's that time of day where sun's going setting down and it's mid-july in florida so you can imagine it's pretty uncomfortable over there so also i don't want my camera to die out so we're over here in the shade and we are running our polymer sealant you guys know i'm not a fan of wax i never will be again i prefer ceramic coatings um and then second to that is polymer sealants trying to get the best protection for our clients and the nice thing about this polymer is number one, it's super easy to apply, super easy to wipe off. With the added SiO2 in the coating, you're gonna get extra reflection, um, heat reduction, better water beating properties, longer durability. So just some of the benefits. Wax just simply sits on your boat and it comes off when you're washing it. So the more you wash your boat, the easier the wax is gonna come off. There's not really a bond being created unless you're using a synthetic wax, but a pure Carnuba wax is just sitting on top of your surface that's why it looks so shiny. And you gotta think of it like grease. It's not really making a bond. It's just a wax. It's an oil sitting on your boat. So always go for the polymer option. Um, it's gonna hold up a little longer and give you better results. So this is super easy to work with, easy to wipe off when you're done. You can wait about, you know, you can wait a half hour, you can wait an hour. I think I ran this whole entire haul and then came back and wiped it off. If you guys have a gloss reader, and it's showing an 85, an 88, a 90. You don't have to be worried about struggling to take your polymer off because that surface is prepped and you're working with pure gel coat. You're not working with oxidation. If your polymer or your wax, if you're having a lot of trouble wiping off your product, it's because you still have oxidation in the boat. If you're working with an oxidation-free boat and you have a great gloss on the boat, you're gonna be able to wipe it off. So you don't really have to get too worried about the time frame. But typically, I like 30 minutes is a good time frame because number one, I don't have all day to sit around and wait for the wax to dry. And number two, that's the optimal time that it needs to actually bond to the boat. So just a few pointers there if you have any questions about that. Hopefully, we were able to clear that up. You guys know, you can always leave comments below. I always answer comments. Even if I don't get to them for a week or so, I do answer all my comments eventually. So we're using a dual action posture. And like I said, if you had the dual action posture at the beginning, the max shine for your sanding, you can just use that again here. Really any dual action posture is great for this. You don't need anything fancy. I'm using a Rupes because I like the Rupes, which I use on my car detailing. So since I have the machine, I like it and I'm using it for the waxing purposes, but you don't need anything crazy, just something to spread the wax around. Again, with everything in detailing, you're gonna do horizontal and do vertical motions. And really here, you're just making sure, you only have to do one pass. One time uh, vertical, one time horizontal. You just gotta make sure that you're getting the wax over the entire boat, and then you're good to go. You're gonna wait, let it dry, let it bond, come back and wipe it off at the end. 
Let's work down this boat. Again, I have other videos on strictly how to wax a boat, which are more in depth if you wanna check those out. I will throw two of those up on the screen for you guys. But we're gonna run this down and I'm gonna show you how to come back and do the wipe off process. Here's kind of what it looks like with the polymer setting up on the boat. Now I'm not sure how good you can see it, but there it is. So it's gonna be a little hazy, but when you come back, you're gonna get that super nice finish. Jeskar Ultralock really restores shine and really brings out the color in these boats. So you're really gonna see an incredible reflection that makes a big difference, even just from the polish up to the polymer. Usually that's not the case, but Jeskar does a great job of that. Also ceramic coating glue will do that because you're putting a layer of glass onto the boat really enhancing and deepening that shine. So coming back with a two-step process, and I think I'm just doing the first, yeah, I'm just doing the first wipe now. So you wanna do two wipe offs. So you're gonna have an initial microfiber plush and you're gonna have a second microfiber plush. You're gonna come by, take everything off with one towel, make sure you get it really good. And then the second one is like your finishing towel. In case you happen to miss something, you're gonna come back and give it that final wipe because we don't wanna miss any polymer on the boat that's gonna dry different on the boat. It's gonna look different and we wanna make sure that our results are top of the line. So do your two steps, um, that's the right way to do it. And the first wipe off is usually gonna take a little longer than the second one. The second one is just a quick wipe down, make sure you're good. Just take your time, there's really not a whole lot else to explain. The only other tip I have is to use your towel and fold it into fours so that you get eight sections. You get two sides, four sections per side. For your towel, this will give you the best, I guess, optimization for using your towel effectively and being able to use it for a long period of time before you have to exchange for a new one. So you could do a whole entire boat with just one towel as long as you take good care of it. When I first got started, I would just grab the towel in my hand and just wipe off, but really, it doesn't leave the best finish. You're not getting the most amount of pressure and just not the easiest way to do it. So fold that towel into fours. Also, I do like to wear gloves. You're working with harmful chemicals to the skin, silicone, um, SiO2, that is harmful to the skin and will cause irritation. So, you know, I'm young. I want to do this for a long time and I definitely prioritize my health when taking this into consideration. So whether I'm buffing, polishing, using coatings, um, doing polymers, I'm gonna wear gloves and do it the right way. back do our second final wipe here in just a second and that's gonna be the wrap of the video so I know we covered a lot we covered a little bit of everything wet sanding buffing polishing polymer sealant application now I do have different videos on YouTube which are more strict and focused and specialized in one area of my detailing so you can check those out this was a great general overview for someone looking to restore a boat on a budget this was a two-day project and I believe I definitely finish this in like probably 10 to 12 hours for the haul so i did do the top side portion as well which i included into the two days so definitely super reasonable and easy to complete now guys you can purchase any stark products at marinedetailsupply.com use my code topdoc15 to get 15 percent off and we're gonna end the video here guys if you like the video leave a like drop a comment be sure to share this with other people because the more people we reach the more we can expand our channel and the more people we can help. So with that said, guys, if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button now and I will see you on the next video. Peace out.